section 26. Section 26 deals with instances of obtaining. Now, we saw that in section 25 2a, when an invention is wrongfully obtained, it can be a ground for opposition. Section 26 deals with instances covered under section 25 2a. Section 25 2a covers instances where a patentee or a person under or through whom he claims wrongfully obtained the invention or any part thereof, which means it did not be the entire invention, it could be certain things covered in certain claims from him or from a person under through whom, whom he claims. So, the opponent, if he has a case that the patentee wrongfully obtained the invention from the opponent, he can file a ground for opposition under section 25 2a. Now, where such an opposition is filed and the controller comes to a conclusion, this is 26.1a, that the invention that has been claimed was obtained from the opponent in a manner set out in clause A of subsection 2 of 25, that is 25.2a, and revokes the patent. So, wrongful obtainment, as I said, is not a substantive ground it is not based on the merit of the patent. The fact that the patentee did something wrong, he claimed an invention that did not belong to him, the controller can revoke it. So, it is not based on the substantive merit, it is based on the conduct of the patentee. The fact that he filed an application which he was not entitled to is a ground for revocation. So, the controller has the power to revoke. Now, he may on the request of sub opponent made in the prescribed manner direct that the patent shall stand amended in the name of the opponent. Now, this is a slightly different relief. Normally, an opponent files an opposition to destroy the patent, to revoke the patent. Now, if the opponent's case is that he took the invention from me, then the opponent may be interested in getting that invention back. So, this is a provision where a granted patent can be transferred from one person to another. This is probably the only provision in the Patents Act. So, if the question is asked, under which proceedings of the Patents Act can the controller transfer a patent, granted patent, from one person to another, the answer is 26. This is actually transfer of patent because your name is going to be substituted as the patentee or you could even word the question as under which provision of the Patents Act can a person substitute his name as the patentee give the choices, 26 will be the, even 25.2 may not be correct because 25.2 the relief is only revocation. You saw in 25.4, three things can be done, maintain, amend, revoke. Transfer substitution of name is not a power under 25.4. So, the correct answer will be 26. So, an opponent who claims that the invention was taken from him has the power to substitute his name or request the patent office to substitute his name and the controller if he is satisfied he can direct the patent to be amended in the name of the opponent. So, again this is a case where the patentee's conduct was bad, he actually took something which did not belong to him, the opponent filed a revocation but then the opponent said that do not revoke the patent, I want, I am the original owner, let it come back to me, then the controller will amend it. So, this applies only to 25 2a. Tell me why this does not apply to 25 1a, because we said that the grounds are the same. It does not apply to 25 1a, because there is no name substitution that can happen before the grant. Why should the applicant's name be substituted? For all you know, the, it may never materialize into a grant. So, because it is a right is crystallized in the form of a grant and a person's name is entered into the register, the issue of substitution of name comes in. The issue of substitution of name does not come at the application state because there is no granted right. There is nothing to be to substitute one's person's name to another. So, that is why the reference in section 6 26 is to 25 2a and not to 25 1a. So, this is 
yet another distinction between pre grant and post grant opposition in post grant opposition an opponent can actually become the patentee in pre grant it is not possible 1b a part of the invention described in the complete specification was so obtained by the opponent he may pass an order requiring that the specification be amended to the exclusion of the part of the invention as i said if the allegation of the invention being wrongfully obtained pertains to only one claim or few claims then the controller will strike off those claims revoke those claims because those claims alone cannot be transferred will revoke those claims and allow the patent to continue so if the controller will come to this conclusion after understanding the details of the case if after hearing the parties the controller feels that feels that not the entire invention is wrongfully obtained only a part which is in say claim 5 and 6 for instance 5 and 6 alone covers what the opponent claims to be his now there is no provision for transferring 5 and 6 alone to another person so the controller will strike off 5 and 6 and grant the patent with the remaining claims because the remaining claims if it is proved that the remaining claims were not wrongfully obtained so that is what b tells us two where an opponent has before the date of the order of the controller requiring the amendment of a complete specification or referred to in clause b of subsection 1 filed an application for a patent for an invention which included whole or part of invention held to have been obtained from him and such application is pending the controller may treat such application and specification in so far as they relate to the invention held to have been obtained from him as having been filed for the purposes of this act relating to priority dates and claim of the specification on the date on which the corresponding document was or was deemed to have been filed by the patentee in the earlier application but for all other purposes the application of the opponent shall be proceeded with as the application for a patent under this act this is a lengthy provision you may have to read it in some detail now this talks about a situation where the opponent has before the date of order of the controller requiring amendment of the complete specification under subsection 1b we said that if part of the invention is covered the controller will ask the patentee to amend before he asks the patentee to amend if the opponent has filed an application so first we said that what if the opponent does not have an application if these claims are dropped these claims are dropped they fall into the public domain but where the opponent has filed an application for a patent which included the whole or part of an invention held to have been obtained so we mentioned 5 and 6 were wrongfully obtained but 5 and 6 appears in the application filed by the opponent that's the case here now now i told you an instance where 5 and 6 claim 5 and claim 6 were wrongfully obtained by the patentee so the controller under 1b 261 b can strike off 5 and 6 now assume that before he strikes off 1 5 and 6 there is an application filed by the opponent which has 5 and 6 in it or something similar to 5 and 6 because obviously because once i know that somebody i'm going to make a claim from somebody that you have taken my invention only a part of my invention i will definitely file a corresponding application because i need to protect it otherwise it just when the controller revokes it it falls into the public domain so this is a part of strategy so you could have a question that if you are a post grant opponent and you feel or if you are a person who wants to raise an objection that part of your invention has been taken by another person and he has been granted a patent now what will be the safeguards that you take a b c d in one of the choices you can mention that you will file a patent for covering claims for what he has obtained and then file an opposition under 252 that will be the best answer because if you file an opposition under 252 without filing your own application then if the claims are struck off under 252a you will not get it because your case is that only a part of the invention is taken are you able to understand only a part of your invention is taken 
if you do not have a parallel application when the controller strikes off revokes it he amends and he allows for the pattern to continue without your part of the invention and how do you claim it. So, the safe guard is that you should file an application before you contest the post grant again this is a practice tip which you should advise an opponent any opponent who comes and says a part of my invention is taken the advice would be to file a, you will get all the priority date because the opponent has preserved all the priority for you. Now, let us see how this proceeds the controller may treat such application and specification in so far as they relate to the invention held to have been obtained as having been filed for the purposes of this act relating to the priority days of uh, dates of the claim of the complete specification which simply means though you have filed the application just before filing the opposition you will get the priority date as on the day on which the patentee filed that particular claim you will get that priority ok. The controller may treat such application relating to the priority dates on the date on which the corresponding document was or deemed to have been filed by the patentee. So, you get the, the instance which we, if 5 and 6 claims are there which you allege the patentee has wrongfully obtained and you file an application for 5 and 6 claim at a later point in time you get the benefit of the patentee's priority you see that there could be a question a very tricky question on anti dating based on this provision do you understand that because here the anti dating happens in two different documents if you raise this question I, I, I really uh, will be interested in seeing how many people can answer that because you could say there is an earlier document which disclosed claims 5 and 6 which had a priority there is a later application filed by a different person and because he raised a section 25 2 objection uh, struck off the claims 5 and 6 as we have mentioned in the hypothetical example and he accords the priority to the earlier date. So, actually he is anti dating the opponent's application to the date of the patentee's application. So, you just read the provision again on the date on which the corresponding document was or was deemed to have been filed by the patentee in the earlier application, but for all other purposes the application of the opponent shall be proceeded with as an application for a patent under the act. So, for the priority purpose alone which means those two claims 5 and 6 though they were filed at a different point in time gets the priority from an other document in this case not filed by the applicant at all. There is a corresponding rule 63 a request under section 26 1 shall be made in form 12 form 12 within 3 months from the date of the order of the controller and shall be accompanied by the statement setting on the facts upon which the petitioner relies and the relief he claims form 12 is for request for a grant of a patent under section 52 2 rule 63 a tells us about the request to be made under section 26 1 a request under section 26 1 has to be made under form 12 within 3 months from the date of the order of the controller order of the controller under section 25 4 where he holds there is a ground for revocation of the patent and shall be accompanied by a statement setting out the facts upon which the petitioner relies and relief he claims saying that he is entitled to this re relief he has already filed an application for a patent and asking for the consequential relief. So, 26 1 proceedings are different from a proceeding in 25 2 the proceedings under 25 2 have to be completed by an order passed under section 25 4 revoking the patent or part of a patent or amending it only then after the order in post grant opposition is out within 3 months you can file proceeding under section 26. So, they are not joint proceedings. So, if a question is raised what is the time frame for filing a proceeding under section 26 1 or for filing form 12 form 12 can also be filed under section 52 2 but if form 12 is going to be filed under section 26 1 what is the time frame you could have 
various choices. Form 12 has to be filed along with post ground opposition that is form 12 has to be filed along with form 7a. Form 12 has to be filed after the order of the controller under section 25.4 but within 3 months that could be the correct choice. You could create different questions based on the details in this but you will understand that 3 months from the date of the order refers to the 3 months from the date of the order passed in post ground opposition.